check to make sure that I'm uh, the counter's working <laughs> and I'm on track and I also have to take a deep breath. It's, pretty it's, heavy. it's not called hand weaving for nothing. <laughs> My name's Faye Skyring and um, I'm a weaver and this is my colleague Di Lansdowne and we were very fortunate to be able to weave the fabric for the heritage parts of Parliament House. This is the Prime Minister's office uh, these are the four chairs that have our upholstery fabric and this large settee here which is placed in such a way that the um, perhaps note takers or observers to a private meeting can um, be, sit here unobtrusively and take notes. It actually is not anything I've ever found boring. I go to my workshop most days. Sometimes I don't go for as long as other days, but it's still not a still not no, a boring process. I love weaving, and it is fun. Yeah, you know, so and that keeps us doing it, I suppose, because mm. of the love of it. And and mm. die with having to match up yarns. Uh, there's nothing boring about that oh, no, <laughs> because no, no. you're. No. Uh, yeah, and every time we get a different yarn, like for a new for a new commission, we have to actually colour sample again because the yarns actually take the dyes a little differently. Different different yarns. So uh, react for every job, mm. there's another lot of colour matching. We we are now in the process of making another set of um, another run of fabric to replace all of these for refurbishment in. Um, in the future. 25, yeah. 30 years time, no, whenever they need it. Our end product will be the same as this. Okay, like so. And then we'll put it on a skein winder and wind it into a little ball. And Faye will put it onto her bobbin and wind it in and uh, weave it into the um, the warp. 
These are my father's, and he was a chemist, and it's before the days of digital scars. Weights in here. And, um, yeah, so he's retired now and he's um, passed them on to me. But he did have it um, packed away for many years, so um, it's good to come out and air it out. I'm going to make up 100 mils of um, Ergolan Yellow stock solution. So I'll weigh out 6.5 grams of dye powder. I used to work in a chemistry lab for many, many years. Uh, that's pretty close. It's swinging from one side to the other there. Just um, put the dye into, the, into a beaker or whatever receptacle you've got. Yep, got the jug. Just pour the boiling water straight on that. Not too much. And mix it up. I'm just trying to get all the lumps out of it. I might have put a little bit much water in there. That looks pretty good. Pour it into the standard flask. And I'll just put the lid on that and mix it up and let it cool down to 20 degrees C, which will give you the exact volume. All right, some water in there. We'll bring the pH of the um, of the dye bath up to 4.5 by adding some vinegar, um, a vinegar, a warden, vinegar and ammonia solution. Right. So, so you give, this, give the yarn a good wash and then put it in the dye bath to heat up a little and um, saturate it with the uh, the mordant in, in the dye bath. Alright. And I will... Each skein, when I'm doing the wool, each skein is a different weight. So I have to calculate how many mils per individual skein to put into the dye bath. Do you weigh that like that? And that is pretty well spot on 150 grams. So. That'll be the next one I die from my sand. At 5%, and then you go, just calculate how many mils you'll need. Just loosen the threads a little. It starts taking it up straight away. And you can see it stripping it out of the out of the bath. Can you not? You can see the bottom of it now. See the bottom of the dye bath? Yeah, you couldn't before. Alright. That's why I've got the gloves on. Because my hands are in the pot. I missed the mark so many times and I had to go back and start again. So once you go over it, it just, it just takes it into another shade of green. Greens are hard. When you just don't quite make the mark, how do you uh, express or relieve yourself? <laughs> Me? I jump up and down. <laughs> and I say, damn. Yeah, that's not bad, it's coming, so this will stay in the bath until it's taken up every little scare of it. I was going to do a dyeing job for someone and I was introduced as Dye Lansdowne and this person met me and said, oh hi Dye, um, I thought I was meeting a company person called <laughs> Dye Lansdowne, someone from Dye Lansdowne. No, that's me. I'm dying every day. Yes. <laughs>
Faye's actually the artist with the colour because you start. You did the original yeah. colours. Mm. But what what mm. Di has contributed to our partnership is her meticulous approach to everything scientific. I'm probably the more technical which probably side of <laughs> the team. Yes, she is. Yes. She is. So that's when it comes. That's down what to has um, you know, put the warp on the loom. In, in a perfect fashion. We're now in the Prime Minister's sitting room, a lovely restful room it is, greys mostly, with um, very beautiful artwork on the wall. This is the original fabric that we wove when we um, did the very first commission for the architects. And it was woven in um, uh, 80, 1986 to 87, 88. We only, the Parliament House was opened in 1988 and we were still working up fairly close to that time. <laughs> but that's the, uh, it goes back to that stage, but it does need refurbishment now after that many years and uh, we have already made this fabric and it's in storage in the basement. What about for you Di? What, what do you like about any... About, do you like these colours yourself? Yes I do, yes I do. It's within the design that Aldo, or within the, um, what do you call it, Faye there? The brief, the the brief, brief. that Aldo had to, of that monochromatic um, colour but with the, with the finer detail when you look up close. So, and, and all of the fabrics are like that. They've got the bit of silk in it that gives it a little bit of uh, sheen. And when you look at them, you, you, you keep looking further into it and you see more in the fabric. So it is quite subtle. This is um, a fabric that sits in this room as well. It uh, covers it's a few tub, I think there's four tub chairs that it uh, covers. And um, that will be something else we will be doing. It's not a very, it's not a very large amount we have to do, so we're quite pleased about that. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but it's um, it sits with the um, um, with this fabric, but not close to it. It sits away from it. We're now in the office of the leader of the opposition. This fabric covers settee uh, chairs and a few more chairs in the um, sitting room. But this is a different, a different weave structure to what we have seen. There's a, quite a bit of silk in this fabric, warp and weft, and it gives it a lightness and a sheen that um, uh, just suits everything else that's, uh, that suits the decor here. This has been recently refurbished in 2009 probably. It was woven 2006-2008. When we came looking at this next refurbishment we were terribly worried because I said I've done that. We've, it's, it's here. And we went with Jacqueline looking into the basement couldn't find it, but then we found a scrap, so we know it has been refurbished and it looks really, really, really beautiful. This is one of my favourite weave structures because it does bring the warp out and that's why it looks, you've, you've got a more striated appearance in this one because it's, that's, you're mainly seeing the warp uh, threads and the weft sort of sits on the back of it, underneath it, so you've got the warp going that way and the weft sort of interweaving it behind. Yeah, so you get that little striping and effect. You'd be very surprised at how bright the yellow is. If the yellow taken apart from all of that is a very, very bright yellow. But it's subdued by the the woven uh, the weft that sits at the back, which is a deep olive green. And uh, so this one only has uh, a few colours in it. <laughs> it's not as difficult as some of the others, but uh, no, we'd like this one very much. No, it's very attractive.
Um, now we're in the Leader of the Opposition sitting room and this is a fabric similar to the one that we've just seen in the structure. It's called a warp face satin and it's woven with oh, probably half a different shades of um, green. Well, what would you call it? Dye? A sage green? Mm. Mm, yeah, a bit, bit perhaps a bit more than that. Mm. And um, then it, it has the silk components also. This was a big uh, amount to do, 60 metres altogether for all of this. The back is all, is the same fabric and the front. there's no leather on this. And we had to put it on in um, two warps because we couldn't fit 60 metres on the back of, on our loom. So we had to make two. Uh, and matching up the second warp to the first warp was really something, wasn't it? <laughs> we Another had to do it. Time problem. We had to do it bobbin by bobbin. We're now in the speaker's suite. This yes. is called the ambassador suite, and where the speaker receives some um, uh, visiting ambassadors, and they have. Little gathering here. This is a plain called a plain weave, which yes. is actually the strongest structure of any of the um, of any upholstery weaves. Just one thread crossing another thread, set very closely, balanced in that the number of the number of threads in the um, warp match exactly the number of whiffs that go across. So it's a completely balanced warp. And it has a white silk in the um, warp and in the weft as well to balance it like that. And we now have to make more to go into storage for the uh, refurbishment in 20 years, 25 years time, which I kind of laugh about. <laughs> mm. Um, well, how do you feel like doing this one again, Di? It's going to be a big one, mm. hey? Yeah, it mm. It's going to be a big one. Yeah, mm. well, so, um, but uh, not such a difficult one in that the colours, the paler colours are easier yeah. to match, aren't yeah. they? I actually have not been in this room before. We've been in... No, I haven't. I haven't. Because... But this is... This is, there's some very modern touches to it, very contemporary, and that, that triptych there. So, and I'm, I'm actually quite surprised at how informal it looks. And this is a very informal, classic kind of a suite that looks, sits very well here. It's quite crowded, but uh, I guess they, uh, when ambassadors do come, they have attendance and be a lot of people here together. I first met Di at uh, a community employment program at Ainsley Village and when that finished we went on to um, try to continue a workshop going. Craft ACT staged a uh, office environment exhibition at which they showcased the um, art and craft of um, ACT workers who may be interested in um, expressions of interest to the building, the Mitchell Jurgel and Thorpe who are building Parliament House. And we were asked to supply samples of um, upholstery fabric, which we did. And working with the design consultants, Aldo Jurgler and Camille Berg and their uh, extensive team then led us on from one thing to another 
and we had no idea what we were going to be let in for. Let in for. We thought a few metres here and there, but it ended up to be a very extensive commission. But um, we <laughs> somehow we managed to get through it. <laughs>